William. Dude, you're gifting me this zigzag, bro? You no, know, that's, that, that's not just a zigzag. This here is a zigzag plus. What? The, the difference between a zigzag and a zigzag plus, other than what it says right here, uh -huh. is the zigzag plus has these extra holes oh, wow. for carabiners here, where the normal zigzag, which uh -huh. I can show you in a second. Oh, nice. This oh, wait. is the okay. first generation zigzag, so they've come quite a long way. Not only in the size of the pulley, the shackle system, the bearing inside with the swivel, and now the two attachments, but you see just overall, mm. you can put the plus behind the original and not even see it. Anyone that's not used the Petzl Zigzag Plus, I highly recommend it. And now, <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> Dude, thanks man. I'm laughing because these are really expensive, bro. I literally go on what CherylTree.com or Bartlett yeah. or what's the other one? Uh, Bartlett, Cheryl. TreeStuff.com. Tree stuff, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. So okay. I've got several of them. Nice. I've used them for years. Like I said, I've still got which now I what? use. You still got the Generation One, which I use as a flip line. Oh now. yeah, yeah. And then my tail is a daisy chain. I've got lots of extra room here for when I've got to maneuver far out and be far away. Up in the tree, yeah. Up in the tree, yeah. But right now, we're going to go over some safety stuff and some uh -huh. kind of do's and don'ts because as you're using these, you've definitely got to get used to this knuckle system and how smooth it can be or can't be and how sensitive it is, especially if you're using it as a type of a lanyard. Whenever you're crossing, there's always the chance of collapsing this knuckle system and slowly taking a slip back and kind of freaking yourself out. So uh, I used it before and I just touched it in the tree and dropped like 10 feet quick. And by the way, he's not giving training advice to you. He's actually showing this to me. You, you could just follow along. Just putting that disclaimer out there. No, Wait, say it again. It's always good to know your old school knots as a backup. That's how I was taught on blade hitches and whatnot, uh, friction hitches, but now we are in a different era of mechanical and whether you get the Kimbo, the zigzag uh, there's several other ones out there mechanical is definitely the way to go but again you've got to know your basics with how to tie knots in case you ever get in a situation where this cracks or or you forget it who knows something yeah it's all about making life easier man nice my very very good friend william elling of 15 years now I talk about him for an hour but i'll put some other links in the videos below to videos we've done together so i've actually got uh -huh. two of the pluses and that's why i'm giving it to you but i run on my plus the adrenaline 11 8 millimeter mm -hmm. it's a Wait, real, let, me, let me get and read that it's a for real those who tight braid you'll be instantly able to recognize this rope just from its color pattern no other rope looks like this okay comes in 100 150 200 feet i recommend for if you're running a mechanical prusik that you get the spliced eye and oh boom, so you can run that right you're through on. Uh, ah. th this comes in real handy when doing crane work uh -huh. and trying to maneuver around larger leads rather than going in front if you need to go behind rather than go behind if you need to go in front as long as you have your lanyard around the tree this just comes unattached and you're moving along you don't need to untie any knots if you need to reset redirect boom you've got instant access here and then with what Pestle's done on the attachment to your saddle bridge here the unlimited swivel it's it's really nice to not have your lines constantly twisting if you're conscious of your movement and what's going on and you're keeping your slack on either side of your body like you're supposed to this swivel plays exactly the role it was designed to do great idea love it this is williams yard he literally took a shipping container we made a whole video about that and uh turn it into a, a shop like if you go in there like you can take a nap you can eat you can cook uh, a whole wood splitting operation over here I had a whole nother video about that I'll put a link in the description below that's a crane this box truck has everything you can need we did a whole video called the most organized truck in the world tree truck I'll put a link below for that DRT guys so again right. so this setup this setup here that we showed just now is for our DDRT guys but the DDRT what's that DDRT which is double rope technique 
mm -hmm. right? And there's also SRT, single rope technique. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys in the industry will, will do both. Some guys just do one or the other. But what this device allows you to do with the accessory of this device, which is called the Shikan, also made by Petzl. Mm. Okay, this is a descending device. So now, if you're running SRT, you're anchored in theoretically here to the top of the tree. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do at this point is through your carabiner, you attach the Shikan to the bottom, you open up the Shikan's gate, you run the rope through accordingly, which gives a great diagram inside on how to run this rope. It should be pretty self-explanatory, but in case it's not, it shows you how to run it. You close it, and it's got double gate locks here for, for you know, obvious safety reasons. But then now you're all set up for SRT, which smooth, you know, uh, smooth ascending when you have a chest harness to pull your slack and then when you want to descend again once it's under a little bit of load it's super smooth it's tough right now that it's not under load but you can see exactly what's going on and what's supposed to happen here just by under a little bit of weight ah, again so ascending down in the tree and when you've got uh the, the, the one thing I like about the zigzag plus is the extra accessory hole here so if you have a chest or a neck attachment that you're using this to suck up your slack you know a harness this is a great anchor point or you could always use it here in the carabiner system that hooks up to the bottom of the shy can so if you're running SRT or if you're running DDRT it really comes in handy when running the SRT because you can run two SRT systems and have it connected to the same zigzag here. So essentially what you're doing is you're duplicating this, but you're putting it on this end. And then what that allows you to do is come from two separate angles and more precisely ascend or descend to a certain point where you then you can uh, conduct your work. Also, if you're at the top of like a maple or it's getting real skinny up there, you can have two like sure. two false crotches and have two lines coming down to you so essentially uh when, when you set your anchor point or what you call lifeline you can double down if you're feeling not so good about the one or if you need uh, more access more stability you know. ah, unlimited applications unlimited. whatever your imagination can come up with nice yeah and i highly recommend for climbing that you use these triple action i've seen in too many videos where the single action that don't have the button the single action when you're leaning up against something will have the tendency to twist and open and it's happened to me before and all it took was one time of being scared that i instantly switched everything that had my life on it up to these triple action if you're unfamiliar so with one, triple two, action three right triple action so you have to first then press the button uh you have to twist the gate and then swing open the gate where mm. standard double action is just twist and open which again when you're moving maneuvering around in a tree imagine my hand being a limb here when you're in a position where you've got tension and you're leaning back and you're mm -hmm. moving around, it's possible, and I know it's possible again because it's happened that this could open. This could open. And if you're running DDRT, you know, it, it, it just could be a safety issue. So again, I, I would recommend triple action locking beaners. One time I was uh, in a tree and I I rubbed against, uh, I don't know, I rubbed against something, I looked down and, and the tension was right on the carabiner and spun it and opened it. That's what, that's I was exactly like, dude, this is impossible. My heart started pounding. I was like, yeah. how in the hell? Yeah. So then, so I was like, do you want to flip the carabiner around so the gate's facing you and not outward? It, it, with a double action beaner, it doesn't matter because you could be maneuvering either way and the slight chance of an accident happening, either something wild happening. You want to add more factors into opening that gate. If, if you only have a two key factor, the chances of it opening are greater than say if you have a three key factor because mm -hmm. you're essentially then playing the numbers game. If it only takes two actions to open something versus three actions, it, it'd be great if I could pull out a carabiner. But every and, single and, thing that you can do to make you safer and safer and safer. Safe. Yep. Even if it costs just a couple more dollars because at the end of the day, your life and your crew's life and your customer's life or home, you know, it could all be worth the difference of 20, 30 bucks. Wow. Which, when you put that in perspective, you know, really means nothing. But yeah, so I've upgraded over the years, and all I've got now are triple action. So I, I can't even give you an example of a standard that doesn't lock. These are all threaded twist locks, just for simple speed line kits. Uh, yeah, I, I have no examples. 
but this is my basic climb bag. I've got some extra pulleys. I've got the Haas foot asunder here for my SRT setup. Extra straps, pulleys, rings, a foot asunder, extra carabiners for the ground guys to grab onto. I've got a basic speed line kit with. I saw the video on Instagram at Random X, yeah. your Instagram, where you were zip lining down monster uh, spruce tree branches all the way past the house, all the way down out to the truck, with, right by the chipper. Without, <laughs> without anybody putting a hand on it, we move branches 100 feet. You know, it's all about finessing the situation the best you can to limit the amount of actual physical activity on the job. Let the machines and your equipment, your ropes, and your mind all do the work for you. Right? So that was that was my climb bag. Here's my saddle. This is what I always go up with nice. whether I need a redirect or if I'm looking to zip line, speed line, if I need to set another uh, false crotch. This is the driver's side, left side, passenger side. I keep my hand saddle. Got a safety uh, ditty bag on there with a quick medic kit and some duct tape, some other things you may need. We run all Cena systems, so we're not yelling and screaming at each other. I got rid of the whistles a long time ago. Oh, so you have, he's talking about he has headsets with the Bluetooth so they can talk to each Built other. Built into the helmets, you know. Just those they have those Protos ones? Uh, it's called, well, the company is called Fanner, and they're out of, I believe, Switzerland, and the specific model is called Protos, which everybody's heard of Protos. Uh, they're a little more expensive, they're a little bulky, but I'll tell you the safety rating on them, the comfortability, the durability, I have had Protos now, uh, I would say five or six years. They're just a great product and combined with the Cena Bluetooth wireless systems, it, you just can't beat it. You can talk to an employee or a crane operator all the way from the backyard to the front yard with no issue, just like you just, and I are talking now. Just talking. Yeah. I like those uh, those gaffs, those climbers right there. Yeah, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber? Yeah. So you see now what they've done is they've come out with aftermarket systems. This is, this is uh, I believe, the Kiwi Climber that attaches onto these. And what it is, for those who aren't familiar, is it's a foot ascender, but it's upside down. So facing down, here's the ascender and it clips on. Fun fact, let me take you inside real quick and I'll show you something. Hmm. Peter, look at this monster saw. Nice. So it was about a decade ago, I took one of these Petzl hand ascenders and I had chopped it down to what you see here now. This was my old steel shank gaff Velcro top, very heavy, older model. What I had done is I had modified this Petzl hand ascender and I bolted it here as a foot ascender. And wouldn't you know it, not too many years later, you have attachments like this that are being made that bolt directly on to the gaff bolts. I should have taken advantage of that a long time ago. Uh, it just proves how far ingenuity can advance the industry and how quickly people realize that just something as simple as this can change a lot of people's lives and make a lot of people's jobs easier. So you, you put the uh, ascender directly on the climber, on the gaff on the shank here? That, that's what you do now, right? So you, you can direct, just step up and down and climb bolt the it. That's yeah. nice. So cool. Is my retire now? Look, what I got, man. William had gifted this to me in a, a long time ago. This I forgot I even gave this to you. You wanna know how, how, how many trees this saddle has killed? Huh. If you look at this sleeve in here, yeah, it's full of sawdust. Wow. You know how long it takes for sawdust to accumulate under that little gap into these tubes? I believe I had this saddle for 13 years before I retired it. Wow. Yeah, you should put some oil on all this, but it's still in great shape. Weaver makes a great saddle. The reason I had purchased this saddle when I had first gotten it is I was going through a cancer that was affecting my kidneys. And at the time I had to have a kidney stint
put in my left side were very much hurt along the back side of my back along my flank closer to my hip and this was one of the first saddles I found that had very ergonomic padding inside and aside from that it was one of the first saddles that had uh, that I was able to get my hands on that had D-rings mini D-rings on the back as well as the front so then what you can do is put the suspenders on and at that time with my with what my body was going through not only did I need that padding but I needed all that weight taken off of my hips and put onto my shoulders and uh, it, it's a great feeling. Bro, you were climbing trees while going through chemo. Yeah, I used to break out of the hospital to go do tree jobs. Like I looked like a skeleton. In I the remember tree. you were you were very very thin and pale, and you had no hair. I thought I was gonna die, and if I was gonna die, I wanted to die what I was, you know, put here to do and what I love. I wasn't gonna. Anyway, <laughs> so taking the weight off of your body and off of your waist with the suspenders at, at the time was very important to me, and now I'll never go back. You'll never catch me having to pull my pants up or my underwear showing again. It's great. Yeah, I'm glad you still got it. Yeah, that thing's made me some uh, cheddar cheese, bro. Well, I don't want it. You had to buy a new cam 131R? Yep. For the the recoil broke so after two years of owning my second cam 131 my first 131 i gifted away but the second one which is not photoed here uh you know after getting started multiple times a day five days a week it goes and putting and four extensions on it <laughs> hey man, if, if i don't have to climb i don't have to climb but Circus what happened pull. is the return system in the in the yep. pole here went out in my old one and i just didn't have time to wait and mess with it so yeah, i had to buy a new one it. you gotta buy a new one Nice. Yeah. So what we were doing up until, which was only a few hours later, is I had to remove the ribs from this system, mm -hmm. pull it by hand, and then stick my finger in here and recoil the wheel. And that bro, that's probably what's wrong. My uh, Husqvarna chainsaw, my 455 Rancher. I feel like the motor seized up on me, but it. It didn't. I think it's something in the recoil. I think because I was using it to flush cut a stump, yeah. and it somehow I think it maybe it sucked up a bunch of sawdust in there. So that's real important during maintenance is to take that flywheel cover and blow all debris out of there because if something gets caught in, in that system, you know that that's can be an issue too. That's what it is. What is this? A Steiner attachment? Right. That's for brush cutting? So most people are familiar with Ventrec, but there's also a company that got absorbed by Ventrec called Steiner. And they used to make farm equipment, small yard equipment like this with all sorts of attachments. And this was actually a prototype for an Orpel atcher, uh, apple orchard. And you've got the attachment of the huge circular blade there, so the tree would insert, get cut, be done. Rides on these sluts nice. to keep it off the ground. It's all belt driven or you had the option to put a larger lawnmower blade on there so it's a brush cutter and then it has a front caster wheel that swivels but this is one of one the only one that exists and really? i got it it's sitting here rusting out you should uh start up and chase me around the yard with it you just got my ankles a, you just got to sign a waiver <laughs> all right so that's william and we're gonna we're now we're gonna make another video talking about his security system i'll put a link below because what he did was sweet Ready? I'm ready. Thanks for showing us all yeah, that. Yeah. No, all right, let's, let's go, go to the next it. video.